IDC's Daniel Hernandez. Ladies and gentlemen, warm welcome from my side. My name is Daniel Hernandez. I am co-lead of IDC's European Digital Transformation Practice, and I am super excited to be here in this festival celebrating innovation and diversity. Now, because of that, I'm going to play with you a game that I used to play with my dad when I was a child. So we used to imagine that we were living in a very highly digital world and think about all those cool devices that technology would bring. Now, it was a lot of fun, but almost nothing ended up being as we imagined. So for starters, my car doesn't fly. We still live on Earth, according to Adriana Mares, not for very long, but uh, let's see about that. Anyways, today we will have a lot higher success rate because we were going to be playing this game using IDC's insights and data. Now, with that information in mind, let's travel in time 10 years ahead to 2029. And the good news is that 75% of the European organizations are totally digitally transformed, so they have become an intelligent enterprise. Now, the bad news is that the rest, and take a second to picture this, a quarter of the organizations we know today have disappeared because they are not able to compete in this highly digital world. Now, because of that, 65% of the European CEOs are already under considerable pressure to deliver a successful digital transformation strategy. But they cannot do this alone they will have to empower and create together with their digital dream team a strategy that has digital embedded and provides the entire organization with a sense of a purpose, a shared purpose. Now, this will create the right environment for this digital dream team, so the heads of operations, customer experience, finance, security, technology, supply chain, to collaborate and respond to the real-time needs of the ecosystem with digital products, services, and experiences. Now, the right corporate strategy will inspire and align people, but to keep motivation along the entire business model transformation, you need to measure success and show the quick wins in every single step of the process. So you should break that strategy into horizons, and those horizons should be composed of very granular use cases that are linked to expected business value and KPIs. Now, if you want to do this with your teams to generate the level of alignment that is needed in this exercise, you need to go ahead and play that game that I used to play with my dad. Imagine the future, taste it, visualize it, think about the changes in your organization and how they would impact real people. So focus first on that horizon three, and then reverse engineer it to know what you need to do in the midterm, Horizon 2, and in the short term, Horizon 1, to become an intelligent enterprise in the future. Let's see an example. Last month, I presented at an innovation event of one of the largest healthcare manufacturers in the world. And from the discussions at the event, I realized that their Horizon 3 is a new business model that I like to call medical instruments as a service. Now, what they do here is that they provide the surgeons, which are their customers, with every single tool that they need to perform their operations on a pay-per-use basis. So they will enable these healthcare professionals to have access to the newest innovations without a massive upfront investment. Now, in order to get there, in the Horizon 2, they will have to infuse their operations with intelligence because their traditional logistic processes are just too slow for the as-a-service uh, economy. And in the Horizon 1, they need to gain end-to-end -end visibility on their customer needs so that they can understand the utilization of these processes. Now, let's have a look 
at how one of their core processes for this manufacturer, the design to operate process, needs to evolve in order to support the instruments as a service business model. So as I said in the Horizon 1, the focus is on generating end-to-end -end visibility on the needs of the customer, because in this business, lives are at stake. Data is incredibly sensitive and understandably, their customers, which are the hospitals and the surgeons within those hospitals, take a very conservative approach because they want to avoid the risk of losing a patient just because they don't have the tools in the operations room. Now, the problem with this is that the security stocks are a lot larger than necessary, and the patients, so people like you and I, absorb that cost. So the focus in the Horizon 1 is on integrating every single business application system and digital app that is underpinning this end-to-end -end process in order to generate a single version of the truth that will enable them to drive a higher efficiency in the operations room, but at the same time, make healthcare a lot more accessible to people. Now, in the Horizon 2, Oh, sorry, the key personas in the Horizon 1 are then the chief of operations and the CIO. Now, in the Horizon 2, they will have to infuse the automation into their uh, operations because in this process, they will have machine learning algorithms that recommend changes in the design to drive a higher level of efficiency in those very complex surgical procedures. And then the manufacturer stage will be infused with extreme automation for a higher speed to market. And finally, connected products will connect those core systems with real-time data, not only throughout the delivery process with track and trace, but after the delivery process, generating new revenue streams from after-sales products and services. So the key personas here would be the head of CX, customer experience, sales, and marketing. Now, in the Horizon 3 is where the magic happens, because this very repetitive process actually becomes a very fluid process and workflow where different elements of the value chain connect in order to deliver more value to the patients, which are, in, a, in the end, the most important elements of that value chain. So here, customers, suppliers, partners, and sometimes even competitors collaborate to save more lives. So the hospitals will share their operation schedule with the manufacturer of these medical uh, devices so that they can work in a real-time fashion with their suppliers. And for example, the sterilization is outsourced to organizations that are specialists on that, avoiding a lot of those infections from spreading in hospitals. So here, again, is the, the collaboration is spreading outside that circle of trust that the Lions were talking about, so that digital dream team, to involve other elements in the ecosystem. Now, this is just one example of an ecosystem business model, but we see this happening in every single industry and sector in Europe, and this is why we believe that by 2021, 82% of the revenues coming from digital transformation business models will be ecosystem enabled. And with that, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. And I think I did it under eight minutes. No? Oh, it was a challenge. <laughs> it, was a, it was a very big challenge, but you did wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Hernandez. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. High five. Yes. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. <laughs>